Hey gamers, welcome to my game room. AJ from Rolling With Rock here, and it's time for another Rock Reacts unboxing video. Today I am opening up Marvel Champions Rise of the Red Skull. And this is a sort of campaign box for Marvel Champions. Uh, I am a huge fan of Marvel. If you do not know, I have a whole shelf of Marvel games here, and then more down there. And Marvel Champions is a LCG from Fantasy Flight Games set in the Marvel Universe. Uh, it is... I've only played two LCGs from Fantasy Flight. Marvel Champions and The Lord of the Rings. And The Lord of the Rings, the card game, is set up a little differently than Marvel Champions. But there, you can see some of the inspirations from one to the other years later. And I know they've had a bunch of L other LCGs. They probably have taken elements from those as well. Uh, I have a couple of different expansions for this game. But I wanted to go ahead and do an unboxing of this one. Because a lot of the other ones, like we bought the Thor, Black Widow, and Captain America packs. Those were just small little individual packs. This is a full campaign box. Uh... So it tells you, like, you can put down... You, you've got, like, a campaign log in the back of this book. So that's very cool. Just right off the bat. Uh, you, <laughs> I love it. They have... Of course, they put some comic artwork in there. Uh, very nice. And you're going to have different scenarios. So you have Crossbones, Absorbing Man, more comics. So there's, like, a little story here. Taskmaster... Zola, Armin Zola, and finally the Red Skull. And then it even has expert rules and ending with more comics. So very nice. Oh, and you're even, you even get two new starter decks in this game, or in this box. So you, for starter decks, you're getting Hawkeye with the leadership aspect and Spider-Woman with the aggression and justice aspects. So that's very, very cool. Not only are you getting, yeah, here, here's our two starter decks. So these alone, just these two starter decks usually, plus a couple extra cards, are usually like $15 each. If you buy like those packs I talked about, Thor, uh, Black Widow, Captain America, those were $15 packs. And this box was, I think the box was 40. So just that in itself is good. And you've got all, you've got all these other villains. you got five different villains in here. So this is a great value just in that respect. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of these cards open and take a look here. Now, I know some people might not like Hawkeye. <laughs> uh, the movies, the original movies didn't do a great job at showcasing Hawkeye. I feel like Hawkeye's best movie is Age of Ultron and that's one of the weaker Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. But that movie shows Hawkeye in the best light, in my opinion. It shows him as a true leader. And this is, you know, I think a big reason why they chose the leadership aspect for Hawkeye. Because he is indeed a leader. And in my opinion, Hawkeye is a great Marvel character. Uh, this has some nice cards in it. So Hawkeye, of course, is your hero. Clint Barton is his alter ego. He is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and an Avenger. He has upgrades with his quiver and his bow. And then Ally is Mockingbird, which is an, she is an Avenger and a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. You have a couple different types of arrows, which totally makes sense for Hawkeye. He has all different types of arrows. Uh, oh, I like this. You have the Kate Bishop Hawkeye as an ally as well. And for those that don't know, Kate Bishop is like someone he trains to take over the, ma uh, the mantle of Hawkeye in the comics. You also have a ally of Black Knight, which there was rumors of Black Knight joining the MCU like three or four years ago, and we haven't seen Black Knight yet. Goliath, which is a uh, Bill Foster, he was shown in the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie, I believe. U.S. Agent, which is a... You might see U.S. Agent in the upcoming uh, Winter Soldier and 
Falcon show. So that's kind of cool. You got Sky Cycle, you got training, a couple different event cards here. Energy cards. The Hawkeye's obligation is criminal past, and Hawkeye's nemesis is Crossfire. I don't know anything about Crossfire, to be honest. Um, I know a lot of Marvel characters, and I, I don't know this character. Um, but there you go. That was a Crossfire. So that's Hawkeye's starting deck. Just off taking a look at it, I do like that. Let's go ahead and see what Spider-Woman has in store for us here. She should be very different from Hawkeye. Hawkeye was very much about his different arrows and upgrading his bow and his quiver. Spider-Woman, or Jessica Drew, is her alter ego. Her number one ally is Captain Marvel. So now we have a Captain Marvel ally. Uh, Captain Marvel was a starting character in Marvel Champions. You have a support card of Jessica Drew's apartment. Uh, she does Venom Blast. And one thing that people don't realize about Spider-Woman is there are a lot of characters in the Spider-Verse, like Spider-Man's universe. Spider-Woman isn't actually, from my understanding, she's not actually part of the Spider-Verse. Uh, she gets her powers in a different way than the you know, everybody in the Spider-Verse. but So she's not actually part of that. I'm sure there's plenty of times where she has teamed up with Spider-Man in the comics because Marvel loves to do team-ups and they do it a lot more than, say, DC even, uh, at least that I know of. But she's not just uh, another Spider-Man character. She very much has her own backstory. But right here, you can see, I'm going to guess that these are... She definitely does interact with Spider-Man at some point. Because they are putting a spider girl in here. And this looks a lot much much more like a Spider-Verse character than Spider-Woman does. You have combat training, tag team. Any other allies? Oh, yep. Peter Parker, Spider-Man. So maybe she's more part of the... Ooh, I like this. Uh, Silver Sable is on this card. They don't name her, but that's definitely Silver Sable. You got Daredevil hiding on that one. There's definitely Spider-Verse characters in here, so maybe she's more connected to the Spider-Verse than I remember. Oh, that's interesting. Her obligation is Uncertain Loyalties, and it has the Hydra symbol on the back, so maybe she was a former Hydra person. And then, speaking of Hydra... Viper is her nemesis. I definitely know the Viper. And then you just have Hydra characters. So yeah, she definitely has something to do with Hydra that I don't remember off the top of my head. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other cards in here real fast. But that's what's in this box. It's, it's just more cards for... I mean, it's a card game. That's what, uh, that's what LCGs are. They're living card games. The content's going to be cards. <laughs> so you have Crossbones... You have his goal cards, Hydra Bombers, other things here, an Absorbing Man. So Absorbing Man is interesting. If you don't know about Absorbing Man, what he is, is he can take on the properties of, I don't know if it's just any metal or just any phys anything that he touches, but when he touches something, like his body takes on those properties. So if he touches rubber, he can be very, you know, he can, things can bounce off of him. If he touches steel, he'll be like steel. He has a very unique trait. Uh, different areas, and stone, so yeah. Different cards there, Taskmaster. I always like Taskmaster. Like, just like how cool he is. I'm, I really hope we get to see the Black Widow movie soon because I think Taskmaster is going to be looking so cool in that movie. What, really one of my favorite Marvel villains. Ooh, they even put some allies in here. We've got Moon Knight, which Moon Knight's an awesome character. Uh, Shang-Chi, okay. 
Uh, I don't know much about Shang-Chi, but I do know that Shang-Chi is getting a movie soon, so that's really cool. White Tiger, Elektra, which anybody, any Daredevil fans know Elektra. And then you have a minion, a Hydra Hunter in here. Okay. This boy wasn't expecting to see more allies in the villain packs here, but there we are. More Hydra Hunters. Looks like this one picks up after Taskmaster. So you've got Mimicry, of course, because Taskmaster can copy anybody. And then you have Armin Zola, which he's hysterical. He kind of reminds me of... <laughs> I, I don't remember the name of it, but there was a, the, one of the bad guys in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, was like a big body and was it Krang? I think it was Krang. It was like a head in like the stomach. And Zola is kind of similar to that. I don't know. I'm assuming Zola came first before Krang, but either way, they're both ridiculous. He's creating weird mutants. With technology. Zola is like a... He was a Hydra scientist. Basically. And he like preserved his consciousness in this weird body. And then of course... Red Skull. Sleeper. Hydra soldiers. Oh, the Red Skull even has a... Okay, that's actually a really cool picture. Red Skull and Captain America fighting. That's really cool. And we got one last pack of cards. So let's go ahead and open these up. But yeah, this looks like it adds a ton more content to the game. I love that it gives you like a story and a campaign mode. Uh, these are more Red Skull cards. A uh, bit of a rival, Captain America and... Red Skull. Oh, this is a really interesting one. <laughs> you have Red Skull standing at a podium with crossbones and viper, and the title of the card is Spreading Lies. Hmm. Of course, Red Skull should have the Cosmic Cube or be looking for the Cosmic Cube. He has a lot of schemes and side schemes. Hydra Flame Soldiers, Hydra Jet Troopers, Hail Hydra cards, and then you have a couple different smaller villain groups like Hydra Patrols, you have Campaign cards, Obligation cards, okay. So these are different campaigns that you have to do, and that's kind of cool to add into them, and that is that. So we have... Five new villains to take on and two new starting characters. So even if you just bought this and the base game, that is a lot of new content at that. That's more villains than were they were in the base game. Base game only came with three villains. This comes with five new ones in a campaign setting. And then it comes with two new starting characters where the original one I think had five starting characters. So that's pretty that's a pretty good value here in this box. Um, thank you guys so much for joining for joining me here for this unboxing video of Marvel Champions Rise of the Red Skull from Fantasy Flight Games. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Go ahead and leave a like and a comment on this video letting me know what you think of Marvel Champions if you played it before or any other LCGs from Fantasy Flight Games. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel so you never miss an episode of Rock Reacts unboxing videos or any of my other content that I am putting out. And go ahead and follow me over on twitch.tv slash rollingwithrock. I am going live every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern with board game content and then streaming other times with games like Among Us and Fall Guys and whatever else I can get my hands on, including Switch games. Uh, go ahead and share this content with your friends if you so feel inclined. I greatly appreciate all of your interactions and your well wishes as I continue to make content here on the channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. This was AJ from Rolling With Rock.